Congressman Jeff Fortenberry. Uh, just yesterday, we had a very important hearing as a part of the Foreign Affairs Committee that looked at a very, very difficult problem in the world today, a most cruel, barbaric practice undertaken by the Chinese government against women and their unborn children, forced abortion, and a one-child policy. I have to tell you, I'm on the subcommittee for Africa and global human rights, and the barrage of abuses to humanity that come across my desk is sometimes so overwhelming it can dull the conscience. But something that has been overlooked by the human family and needs to be looked at because of its most pernicious effect, not only on the lives of men and women who have a strong arm of government forcing them to abort their children, but also how it affects a Chinese society overall and the entire international community. This most powerful hearing that we had yesterday featuring two women who multiple times had the Chinese government force them to have abortion is one of the most pointed and piercing hearings that I've ever been a part of. I thought that you should see components of it. Li then ordered the other agencies, agents to bring me to the hospital for and forced abortion. They surrounded us. Li and two other grabbed me by the arm and dragged me outside. Two others stopped my husband Liu Bing from rescuing me and started beating him. I begged them to spare us. We only wanted another baby and never wanted to do anything evil. Why did you keep such a close watch over us? I also said we were willing and prepared to pay the fines. I kept begging them in tears, but it was no use. Then I threatened to take legal action, but Li replied that my pregnancy with the second child was illegal already, so reporting the case to the court would be useless. I could not free myself, although I struggled all the way. They dragged me down from the fourth floor into a waiting car, then drew me into Jading Women and Children's Clinic and pulled me directly into the operating room. They held me down in the bed and sedated me. The abortion was performed while I was unconscious. When I came to awake, I was already in the recovery room outside the operating room. Doctors told me that they had inserted the IUD immediately after the abortion and that I was responsible for the cost of the IUD procedure. So the IUD was installed inside me against my will while I was lying unconscious, completely unaware and unable to defend myself. After the abortion, I felt empty, as if something was scooped out of me. My husband and I had been so excited for our new baby. Now, suddenly, all that hope and joy and excitement disappeared. All disappeared in one instant. I was very depressed and despondent for a long time. Whenever I thought of it by my lost child, I would cry. Mrs. Ji, let me echo the sentiments of our chairman in expressing our heartfelt horror as to what has happened to you, but also a heartfelt embrace that you are now welcome in a country that is trying to struggle with this issue of respecting unborn human life. But at least we haven't slipped into this barbaric practice of having families subjected to the strong arm of the government coming in and asking them how many children that they have, and if they have more than one, saying that's more than one too many. I am deeply grieved by your story and yet at the same time touched by your willingness to come here and share this with us and I agree with the, the chairman if you would indulge us further with your with your courage and continue to speak out boldly you will greatly assist those of us who are trying to join in solidarity as a human family and say this type of barbaric practice can must be stopped, can not exist in a world that's going to call itself civilized, and recognize the reality of the pain and difficulty it's caused on people like you. So I want to personally thank you for coming, 
and saying this in a most uh, courageous way uh, for your forthrightness, but also g give you a warm embrace as a new American in a country where we have the chance to stop this type of pernicious activity because of our beliefs in the rights and dignity of all. We're still living that out imperfectly in our own laws, yet at the same time we haven't slipped this far. As I was listening to you, I turned my tie over just to see if it was made in China or not. Fortunately, it wasn't. But I would recommend all of you, the next time you pick something up to buy, look at where it's made. How are we indirectly perhaps cooperating in propping up a system that does this to its own people in the name of economic progress? Economic progress is about persons, not about regimes who are going to do this to the citizens of their own country.